Hello, I am Disbrew, and today the biggest story is definitely that Call of Duty Vanguard has had its reveal date announced. Now, this was actually floating around for a while, along with a load of other leaks that we've known before, but now it's actually been confirmed by Call of Duty themselves, it adds a lot of credence to the details, so we'll definitely go through that kind of stuff later as well. But for now, what we've got in this is going to be in Warzone, and it's going to involve the train, yes. It all started with a picture that no one was quite sure if it was real. It was done on like a dodgy camera phone at a weird angle. Um, but then Call of Duty actually came forward and did this picture on their own. I've very rarely seen anyone just dive straight into the rumors and start confirming them. It almost implies that Activision did it deliberately. They sent this information out and they basically knew it was going to be revealed. And so there was no point in trying to hide it and they were ready for it. They were prepared. This is very different than what Battlefield did, which was start just literally getting YouTubers' channels deleted. And I mean, I, yes, they broke the NDA, but come on, do you have to destroy their entire channel for it? Just ban them and have done, you know? Um, but Call of Duty definitely took the better PR route with it and started making memes. It's generally the best reaction to anything I find. And then today we've got this, where they're talking about an armored vehicle that's going to be announced, and it's going to be on Thursday the 19th. And if I zoom in for you, as you can actually see on this, the path around the map is the route that the train goes. Now, they've said it's going to be an armored vehicle, and armored trains definitely existed in this time. Now, Vanguard is going to be set in World War II, but it actually existed in World War I as well, and we actually saw something like this from the original Battlefield games, and they had trains like this, uh, which actually existed in real life. It's poor quality, but let's face it, it's nearly 100 years ago. What do you expect? But I just love the fact that you can see where all of the armor plating actually goes. This is awesome. But if this something like this goes around Verdansk, Run, run, seriously. I don't even know how you're supposed to fight this. I don't think you do fight this. I think the only thing you do here is die. And so let's say you're in hospital and this goes across. I'm not peeking that beast, no. <laughs> and there's also this one, which I believe is a later updated version. And altogether is probably more likely what we're going to get back in Verdansk. Now, during this time, Tom Henderson has actually been leaking a load of stuff on Twitter, and he was where I first saw the date released. And so if he's right about that, a lot of the other stuff that he said is probably, I think it adds a lot more credence to it, and it's probably more likely to be confirmed. And he's come out with various different dates related to Vanguard. And so what we've got first is the alpha test, which he's alleging will be on August 27th to the 29th. And then it moves into the PlayStation exclusive beta on September the 10th to the 12th and there'll be a beta for all platforms on September the 16th to the 20th. Obviously, this is a rumor. Take it with a pinch of salt. It can move either way you want. Um, but I think given what we know from everything else, it's likely. And this actually makes it difficult for Battlefield because these are the two big FPS going head to head together. And uh, Battlefield is also going to be in September. And with this many different betas around, it doesn't leave much room for them. And so if they were planning to be towards the end, uh, maybe they want to shift it up. Maybe they want to hit the start of the month and get their impressions in first, because now we're really moving into hype territory. But these betas also have to be top quality. This isn't going to be an option where you can go, well, you know, it was boggy and it was terrible, but maybe they'll improve it before launch. No, these have to be polished and clean, because now this is a battle. We've gone through a long, dry period of just where there hasn't been that many quality games for like the last year or so but now uh, they need to pull something out of the bag and so we've got, actually got details of the alpha that we can expect and again rumor pinch of salt but let's see what we've got so this will be champion hill which will be the mode for the alpha which is on the 27th to the 29th how wide this is going to be open to people, I'm not really sure, especially as there's going to be a PlayStation exclusive beta first, and they probably want to be that to be their big event. And so in Alpha, it's probably going to be more like a technical preview, just invite only to a certain number of small people. It's probably not something that most people will have access to at all. But for that, we have Champion Hill, and he's got details of Champion Hill. There's going to be four special maps. He's describing it as a mini battle royale experience with mechanics similar to Warzone. And in the next tweet, he gets down to what that actually means. It's going to have live count. So you're going to all be in teams. You've got limited number of lives and you've got to survive to the end. You've got to earn cash, grab weapons, lives. There's armors, all kinds of different arenas. Buy stations. Again, you've got to buy weapons, perks, buy, buy people back, streaks in the octagon. 
And I think this is a fairly big deal because the biggest problem that I've had with Warzone is that it just doesn't update the map. And so when you get stuff like this for special maps, it can really just make the entire experience better. Because when you make one big map, it doesn't matter if you don't see it all. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where it's just all the same. And just even if it's a smaller map, just having it rotate out definitely gives a different experience, definitely adds more variety to it when you don't know what you're going to get. And you can build up tactics for these different areas. One of the problems that I have with Warzone is just I actually don't like a large part of it. All the sort of the top area and the right hand side for me, I just want that to go. It's all big and open and it's not really my kind of fight. I like pushing people in close areas. It's why I like Rebirth so much. And so when you get down to four special maps, they can be designed with so much more care. They don't need big open areas in between all the different maps that you've stitched together. So you won't end up with these just dead end zones which don't really go anywhere. I kind of like the idea of mini battle royales. And I know a lot of people might not see it as that big a deal. It might not... Uh, it might not seem like that big a deal. They may not see the difference between that and Warzone. If Rebirth has taught me anything, it's like a different map can completely change the experience and you can design them specifically for different experiences. So I'm quite excited about this. I think this is a, this is a good idea to do. And when it comes to Warzone, when it comes to actually changing the map, he said that the current number of 6VC maps will launch as 16. And that's actually a massive number of maps. That's far more than I thought they'd kind of do. But if you're going to do a new Verdansk map, you actually need a lot of maps. Because Verdansk is just a load of multiplayer maps that they've stitched together. And so if they want to do a new one, especially if, as, as Tom Henderson has said in another tweet, they're going to replace the map with a new one, and it's going to be literally 30% bigger to make space for... Uh, new vehicle mechanics or larger player numbers, which is what I'm hoping for personally, then you need a load of new maps. They're just going to stitch new maps together again to make that new map. But if they want it to be larger, they're going to need a load of new stuff. And I think this is a good idea overall. I really hope in the next map they improve the stitching together of the maps. In Warzone, there's big gaps between them. You can see where one app ends and the other one begins. It's like almost a grid system that they just stacked them on top of. And so I hope that they come up with, they put more effort into merging them to make them feel like one map, to make the flow better overall, not just, oh, we'll stick a road here, that'll do. Oh, here's a field, you know? So overall, I think there's lots of room for improvement and how they've done Warzone, and I hope that they have taken that into account and learned from it and not just thought, yeah, we'll do the same thing and we'll just put down new points of interest. That'll be fun. And one of the interesting new points for it that he said, which is weird to me i'm not gonna i'm not sure how they can do it half and half but this is what he's kind of saying is that they're gonna add destruction they're taking a leaf out of the battlefield book one of the better leaves actually where you can yeah, why use a door when you can just go through the wall next to it it adds more openings to buildings you don't have to it, like one of the issues at the moment if someone holds up in a building and they're just staring at a staircase uh, that's where you're gonna have to go. You have to take them front on and they definitely have the advantage. When you can start entering through walls and other kinds of stuff, it really opens it up and it really makes it less of a campers game and more on the aggressive side. And that, that is a bias that I would always lean towards. I think the people who are the most aggressive should win. I think the people roaming the map should have the advantage or at least the skills, the tactics and the tools in order to handle the campers when they find them. It's why I was a big fan of all the zip lines on the buildings. More points of entry, I think, is good. And so if they can nail this, I think it's great. He's also said that mounting will be back, and he's got so many problems. Removing recoil, remove skill. Making it so that you can only mount in certain places. Now I'm looking over there when I need to look over there, but he can mount and look back at me. It simultaneously adds more complexity while removing skill, and I think that is just a poor thing to do. When I get aimed, at, when I get shot by someone, I want to know they out-aim me. I want to know that they controlled their gun better than me. I want to know that they were the better player. And when you have things like mounting, it just removes a lot of that for me. And I don't think it just adds any kind of satisfying mechanic to the game. And so, while I'm excited for the new card, while I definitely think they need to add it, while the uh, whole anti-sheet scenario definitely needs to be added in as soon as possible, they're saying that they're going to wait for Vanguard before they add it. I think this is a mistake. I think the second that thing is done, add it in. In fact, I don't even care if it's perfect. I don't even care if it doesn't detect people very accurately. If it detects one guy, add it into the game. As long as it's not detecting people who aren't cheating, that's all I care about. 
This is a feature that should not be a sales point for your game, and that seems to be how they're going along with it. If they're going to wait for Vanguard before they add it in, then that is a mistake. Now, we have learned that they are adding in a feature to Warzone, like, just an hour ago, that adds to the kill feed when they've banned someone from your game for hacking, rather than just saying they've disconnected. Letting players know when cheaters have got banned is always a good thing. More information for players is always a good thing. So hopefully this is an idea. Hopefully this is a sign that they're adding the anti-cheating faster than they're not waiting for Vanguard. But if they are, if Tom Henderson is right and that is what they're planning, then seriously, I have no idea what they're doing over there. This isn't a feature you can wait. This isn't a sales feature. This isn't something that makes people want to buy your new game. All it's doing is costing you players. Every second you wait, every second you're not adding that into the game, it's costing you players. And a lot of those players, it doesn't matter if you release a new World War game, they're just not going to come back. But for now, that's it from me. If you liked the video, press like and subscribe for more videos in the future. And let me know what you think of COD Vanguard down below. Are you excited for it? I'm interested to hear. But for now, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, bye bye